Who would have thought that an anime about board games would have been that interesting? Welcome back to my channel, guys. It's me, or really another anime review. This is going to be on one that you guys can find both dubbed and subbed in Funimation. Uh, it's called After School Dice Club. Uh, it is an anime that I dropped and then re-picked up uh, once it was dubbed. Um, I said, why not? Let's give it a try. Uh, I, 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 maybe it can just be some <laughs> background sound. And really, that's really why I, I picked it up. But... Anyways, uh, the anime itself is uh, it's about board games, and I did a first impression video, so you guys can find that in my channel. Before I continue with my review, though, a few things. If you have not done so by now, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Hit that bell button if you guys don't mind, and you'll be notified when I go live or when I upload videos. Also, if you want to further support my channel, you guys can always become a Patreon, comment, like, and share this video, or join the Discord family. Any of those uh, really helps the channel. I am trying to reach 3,000. Um, I'm not doing no more giveaways until I reach 3,000. So that's what I'm I'm sending my foot down. No more giveaways until I reach there. And, and hopefully that's soon because we're almost there. Uh, we're just slightly behind. So, uh, oh, and lastly, there's a few spoiler alerts on this anime because I will talk about it in some detail. Um, the anime itself follows... Uh, well, for a while, it's three girls, but then the fourth girl is eventually added. Uh, but it's essentially in the first few episodes, or the first episode, really, you meet Mickey, you meet uh, Midori, and you meet Aya. And then eventually, Emilia is added to the group. And um, it's a slice of life. Really, every game kind of goes back to them playing a board game. Uh, either one that comes from Europe, or one that they made themselves, uh, from a from games that already existed, they just they just changed some rules, or from an actual board game that one of them is actually creating. Um, because of how the plot works, I'm not actually going to talk about it as a whole, but I'm going to talk about each character and how they fit into the story. Uh, first, let's start with Mickey. Mickey's probably the most uh, main character of them all. And she is a quiet girl, very shy girl. In fact, one of these other girls uh, comes up to her in the first episode, bumps into her, and kind of forces her to hang out with her. Mickey is uh, very shy, doesn't like to interact with people. And the reason why we eventually get through the episode is because uh, she was bullied as a kid. She was bullied by other kids, and she was just uh, not the best kid life she had. Um, that affects her throughout the entire series in when she does make these friends, then she doesn't want to let go of them. She, at the last episode, uh, has this kind of anxiety, um, of, of what's going to happen in the future. Is everyone going to go off and do their own things? Am I going to be forgotten? And et cetera, et cetera, because she's lived, you know, once you watch from episode one to 12, she's lived a great a year of her life and something some things that she would have never imagined doing because you know she was just shy they didn't want to talk with anyone she got to do with all these girls and actually had a bunch of fun so she did have kind of an anxiety attack in the last episode uh the other girl that was met in the first episode is aya and this is the girl that pushed mickey to really be more open and doing stuff and aya is very energetic she loves to do stuff um and very similar to mickey she she has a little bit of rough past and that is um her mother uh or or she she's part of a um divorced family her mother left the family and she was left with only her bigger sister and her father now her father travels a lot he's a photographer for magazines so he travels all the time and he's almost never there he's absent so she was really raised without parents and um we have a whole episode of drama of how she really craves that attention from her dad that attention of him wanting to meet her friends and he just puts his job before everything and she was tired of it she she finally broke up uh her feelings and opened up to her dad and let, let him know that you know it sucks to be second to you that your job comes first and then everything comes second so um although she's probably the uh, most 
chirpy character in the entire series. She does have a tough uh, living situation and and really oh well. But next one is Midori. We also see her in the first episode. Midori is a very um, focused girl. She I guess can be the quote unquote nerd or intelligent girl of the group. Uh, she has it tough. She has to have a part time job to be able to help out with bills in the house. Uh, that's not really mentioned too much afterwards because really her main thing in the series is that Midori has a dream and that dream is to create her own board game. Um, and throughout the series, we see characters that push her into finishing the board game, uh, showing the board game to people, and then placing it in a competition. And she really uh, goes to different stages of not understanding how board games you know, can do if... The different things board games can do to you if you just change a few things. So uh, she goes on and um, changes a few rules to her game and the game completely changes. And then eventually she completely adds a bunch of stuff to the game which makes the game a lot funner. And her guinea pigs are her friends who are testing the game. And they're very encouraging for the most part but they also do judge her because uh, they've played board games with her all the time. So they always tell her... There's something missing, but it's still a good game. Um, so, yeah, that's her. The last one is Emilia, and Emilia is actually a foreigner. She comes from Germany, um, and she finds this group of girls that enjoy playing board games, and she's thrilled because it's a big thing in Germany to pay, play board games, apparently. And uh, she joins the group, and really, she's kind of more the... Um, she hypes people up. She invites them to her house. She's having a good time. Really, her background story is not really shared too much in the in this season. Uh, if there even is going to be a second season, which I doubt it. But she essentially is a girl who also dreams to be a game maker. And uh, she also um, is just one of those very chirpy characters that we see in the, in the anime. Other characters that we see throughout the anime is Ryu, Ryuji, uh, Yudo, Shuda, uh, the, those boys are basically the guys that kind of go out with the girls once in a while. And then we have, um, Kinju, I believe his name, is the, the shop owner where Midori works. And then, um, Aya's sister and Aya's sister's friend who, uh, happened to defend Miki when she was being bullied. So, you have a bunch of other characters that come in to play and, Really, they just all come together to this wonderful slice of life based on board games. So, um, out of 10, I'm going to give this one actually at a higher rating than I thought that I was going to give it. I'm going to give it a 6.5. Um, I'm not going way beyond this rating just because um, I don't think it deserves higher than that. And the only reason I put a 6.5 to it is because it is unique in itself. You don't get animes based on board games. And really, every anime, you learn about a new game and you kind of... You kind of learn something new. It's kind of fun. But at the same time, it gets a little bit boring. Um, the best part of this series is its side genre. Main genre is board game uh, slash slice of life. The side genre of this anime is drama. You know, there's some drama between the girls past. That's probably the best part of the anime, guys. That, that, that gives you a little bit more understanding about these characters and gives you a little bit more sympathy of how they act and why they act the way they act. So, um, I think that made the anime for me better, as well as the fact that it was unique on its own on, on board games. But other than that, I think it's one of that you guys could watch and have fun with it, but also if you miss it, you're not missing much. So, yeah, 6.5 is where I give it. Let me know in the comment section if you decided to watch this one through Funimation or through whatever other means you guys watch anime. Uh, also, let me know if you are watching um, other series this season that you recommend me to watch as well. I have dropped a lot. Uh, obviously, I give first impressions on a lot of them, but I drop most of them and just keep about seven or six. And, and eventually, I do watch more uh, if they're dubbed or um, if they're um, something that I'm hearing a lot about. I'll watch them sub as well. So I, I'll, I'll just go back and watch them. Like this one. This one was one that I dropped, but I picked it up because it was dubbed. Why not? I'm folding clothes. Why not watch it in the background? So um, overall, not too bad. So let me know in the comment section what you guys I should be reviewing for you guys. And let me know 
Also, if you want to see more anime reviews, thank you again for your love and support, guys. And like always, don't be strangers. See you guys.